Final Fantasy XV's benchmark was the first implementation of Deep Learned Super Sampling, or DLSS, but only in the benchmark version, not in the actual game until just recently, the last few days. We haven't been fond of the benchmark as a standalone component because it is a bit flawed ever since its release, but the game makes a much more sensible comparison. Just recently, the game enabled DLSS in actual gameplay, which will leverage the RTX device tensor cores and leverage some of that extra technology that otherwise rests dormant in common games. Today, we're primarily looking at DLSS versus TAA qualitatively, comparing image fidelity with some quantitative benchmarks for performance numbers afterward. Because the Final Fantasy XV benchmark is heavily controlled and flawed in other ways, and NVIDIA can also sample images from a railroaded path, its value is limited, and so now we turn toward real gameplay for a better understanding of what's happening. Before that, this video is brought to you by MSI's MEG Z390 ACE motherboard, which primarily offers high-frequency memory support for 4500MHz kits and tight timings tuning, but also comes equipped with a 12-phase V-Core VRM ready for the 9900K, a pre-installed I.O. shield, and an infinity mirror for RGB LEDs atop the left heatsink. The RGB LED is synchronized with MSI's Mystic Light to support RGB and rainbow LED strips using the infinity mirror to cascade lighting. Learn more at the link in the description below. The quick version of what DLSS does is as follows. Enabling DLSS in Final Fantasy XV requires 4K resolution, which is because it will render the game effectively at 1440p, then upscale it and supersample it to reduce workload on traditional shaders and migrate it to the tensor cores instead. NVIDIA uses a supercomputer that works off of a series of ground truth images from the game's developer, all rendered at high resolutions and with 64 samples per pixel of anti-aliasing, which is massive. The game then is used to deep learn what the pixel values should be in each scenario running through that supercomputer. The idea is brilliant strictly at a conceptual level, as NVIDIA can then skip rendering some pixels on the screen to instead infer their values from neighboring pixels and based upon that deep learned data. It makes a lot of sense if it can work, because this reduces the overall workload and allows those shader units on the GPU to be used for something else instead. The actual execution of this is still very new, and it's functionally in a beta phase, despite being available in a commercially selling product finally, which would be Final Fantasy. DLSS will generally see easiest integration into games that already support Temporal Anti-Aliasing, or TAA, and is primarily marketed as a performance uplift, not necessarily as an image quality uplift. In NVIDIA's marketing materials, there's one paragraph that suggests any kind of image quality improvement with DLSS, stating the following. Using that basis for machine learning, we've created a new rendering technique called Deep Learning Super Sampling, DLSS. It boosts performance by a significant degree, can, can improve image quality, that's the key one here, can improve image quality, and its anti-aliasing has better temporal stability and image clarity compared to commonly used TAA techniques the incorrect apostrophe and a possessive it's notwithstanding. NVIDIA says that DLSS can improve image quality, but keep in mind that there are two forms of DLSS, so this is basically true, just not always. There's DLSS as it's implemented in Final Fantasy, and then there's DLSS 2X, which keeps the native render resolution and then super samples, whereas the current implementation in Final Fantasy is to reduce the render resolution to 1440p from 4K, and then finish the rest of the processing. Our opinion is that the more accurate naming would be DLS 1 half for Final Fantasy, and then DLSS for anything else. It's rendering at 1440p, so it's, it's not exactly what you would expect. Regardless, the primarily marketed use for the technology is performance uplift by reducing render resolution and migrating anti-aliasing to auxiliary hardware like tensor cores to free up shaders. So let's look at this from a qualitative standpoint and see what the visual differences are. There are a few specific areas in Final Fantasy XV where DLSS is most noticeable, and those include flickering and shimmering of thin geometric elements at a distance. One example is in the fences in the background at the starting gas station. With DLSS on, that fence and its thin bars flicker, almost as if the pixels are being translated as we move, and they even flicker when standing still, which is the most noticeable. Pausing the game, for instance, on a single frame still curiously produces this flickering effect. The reason for this, we think there are one or two possible scenarios. In one scenario, DLSS may be alternating which pixels it's skipping, which becomes noticeable when the camera stops moving for a second or more. 
In the other scenario, it could be that DLSS is using a random seed generator for its solution, coming up with slightly different answers to solve the pixel values each time it calculates. There is no real necessarily definitive truth to what the pixel value could be, so this is a possibility, but we think that the former is most likely. As for the reason of why this shimmering occurs to begin with, aside from potentially alternating the sampling, we can look toward text resolution to better understand what's happening. On license plates and with other objects that have text, we see that there's a slight blurring of the text legibility and quality with DLSS enabled. The primary reason for this is less to do with the resolution and more to do with the available data from which the tensor cores approximate the correct values for missing pixels. Text has thin lines, and the surrounding colors of that text, like white in a license plate or maybe black or blue on a sign background, are very important colors to ensuring legibility and pop of the text in the foreground. In this instance, some of those thin blank spaces are being misinterpreted by DLSS to be similar colors to the text and its borders, thus producing a blurring effect that makes the text appear somewhat smeared. Ultimately, the importance of this side effect will sort of depend on the games you're playing and how you like to play them. For most games, blurring text on something like a license plate really isn't all that important, although it is an imperfection that is objectively worse quality than the TAA output at the same resolution. The value comes down to performance. What do you gain in exchange for that? And that's something we'll look at at the end. We'd be curious to hear which of these two outcomes you prefer in the comments below. Ignoring performance, how much does it matter to you that the text is a little bit blurry? Let us know. Uh, hopefully it comes through with YouTube's compression, but we're not sure how it'll look. So you may need to see it for yourself. Telephone wires are another good point of comparison. For these, TAA nearly fully erases the wires when in the far distance, leaving nothing there until the player has closed in on the telephone wires. Close up, the wires with TAA still render and aren't too jagged when the camera is laterally still, but side to side or lateral movement will create a hardened line until the camera stabilizes on the horizontal axis. DLSS resolves the far distance telephone wires as a flickering line with cables darting in and out of existence, appearing jagged and heavily aliased. DLSS appears to make the wires jagged when the player is moving, but smooths them out pretty well when the player is still. This is contrary to other objects like the light poles and fences in the gas station parking lot. You'll notice severe flickering in the light fixture when the camera is still, but also that it smooths out when moving. The fence flickers in a wave-like pattern when the character is in motion, and with TAA, the fence does not flicker, and the light fixture presents the same both stationary and in motion. It, there's, there's no flickering issue with TAA that's anywhere near what you're seeing with DLSS, both in motion and again still. This scene, this next one, is sort of interesting. We chose it because it's complicated to render, and it's a bit different from the previous ones. Our goal was to look at the shadows cast upon the highway guide rails, thinking that the complexity of thin objects, the grass, mixed with light and shadows of thin objects, would challenge both TAA and DLSS. Both came out looking roughly the same, which is good. In a performance-bound scenario, the solution with the best performance wins, and that's DLSS, assuming the image quality is the same, and it is in this specific scenario. We do have to consider the whole experience though, because no one really wants to toggle DLSS on and off on a per scene basis. Seeing this image equality between TAA and DLSS is good for the new technology, although we did notice one interesting difference, and that's the lights in the background. If you look in the back right, you'll notice that the lights express more bloom with TAA than with DLSS. We'd think that the bloom would be applied after the super sampling process in the post-process pipeline, but it appears that the bloom gets filtered out with DLSS enabled. You'll notice that the orange halo around the lights disappears with DLSS, but looks more realistic and is blooming with TAA. Now, whether or not that matters to you, again, is going to be personal choice. One final example of small geometric objects flickering includes the tent ropes, where DLSS produces observable flicker for the most distant ropes in the exact same way as in our other examples before it. This is because the object isn't dense enough to sample and accurately approximate the neighboring pixel values, thus producing some that are the value of the background instead of the value of the rope. For TAA, we see some slight flickering at the borders, but to a lesser degree than what was seen with DLSS, where you have some of the rope just straight disappearing at times. For the most part, the rest of the scene looks about the same, which is important too, perhaps more important. 
It'll come down to whether you can overlook the flicker in favor of more performance because the rest of the seam is about identical. Character models are probably the most important thing to look at. For this comparison, we're looking at a shopkeeper with TAA and with DLSS opposing one another. There are several changes within the scene itself, but let's first focus on the shopkeeper's face. Facial detail with TAA is higher, with the face texture carrying more blemishes centered around the cheekbones and the forehead. These small blemishes exist on the texture, and with DLSS, they get smoothed out and sampled over. It's hard to see, but if you look closely and strictly at the face, you will see that some of those finer details of skin color differing, for example, do go away with the LSS. We end up removing all of that detail and smoothing out the skin and the face to a point of losing some of that extra realism in the texture. As before, you have to look pretty closely, so whether or not this matters is up to debate, and it's something that we'll have to let you think about if you care about losing this kind of detail. As for the rest of the background, it looks like DLSS is indirectly affecting the impact of ambient occlusion. Looking at the borders of objects in the shade, where ambient occlusion is the most pronounced, you'll see that DLSS appears with reduced shadows overall. This is also true of the rivets behind the shopkeeper, where the shadows around the edges diminish. TAA displays these shadows more prominently, and it's pretty noticeable if you tab between them quickly. Another good quality comparison would be character hair, because it wouldn't be a GN video without mentioning that. This is one area where DLSS and its smoothing effect actually help with quality. With TAA, the hair models are more jagged and missing some data. You'll see some flickering effect as the light pierces through different parts of the hair, whereas DLSS smooths everything out for a better overall image. This is where NVIDIA's statement of DLSS sometimes being capable of higher quality proves to be true. For one more test with grass and with turf FX enabled, we noticed minimal impact from enabling DLSS when looking at the strands of grass, overall producing roughly similar experiences between 4K TAA and DLSS. With distant backgrounds, like this shot of a hillside, a cliff, and some trees, we noticed that TAA had more detailed cliff facing with more defined faces on the geometry, while DLSS, meanwhile, appeared to smear the output. The trees atop the hill also become muddier with DLSS when compared to TAA. Performance benchmarks come up next. The scenarios for quality are mixed. Some show objective quality loss with DLSS, some are debatable and up to personal preferences, and one shows improvement, while many others are difficult to detect. We have to remain reasonable here. Ultimately, it is unlikely that you're staring as closely as possible at the textures in a character's face or using a literal magnifying glass to see differences without any upscaling concerns. In such situations, the qualitative comparison loses its value, as remember that people are actually going to play this game, not just look at it, and that noticing a lot of these details is unlikely during play. Flickering is the most noticeable issue, and the one that will most likely cause frustration and be visible during real gameplay, and that's apparent in thin objects that are prevalent in this game. Even the entirety of a construction crane, for example, was disappearing with DLSS, and for much the same reasons as the power lines were. We have to turn to performance to really call whether the final detail differences, like the NPC's facial differences, for example, are worth sacrificing for performance. The performance uplift could be more noticeable than the loss of small detail, for instance. We just ran the 2080 Ti FE for this one, and we used an 8086K at 5.1 gigahertz, for the CPU to ensure the bottleneck is where it belongs. It's our standardized GPU test bench. You can check previous videos and articles for that. We ran the highest settings with all NVIDIA's GameWorks features disabled, except for TurfWorks, which we used to render the tall grass. In these benchmarks, we saw roughly a 21% performance uplift with DLSS enabled at 4K, which is, again, really a 1440p upscaled and super sampled. But if it looks the same, then, well, what's the difference? We also ran TAA at 1440p and saw superior performance to DLSS and 4K, but we noticed that image quality was measurably worse. In a side-by-side -side comparison of a license plate, for example, TAA with 1440p resolution produced a less legible plate than 4K with DLSS, which is 1440p upscaled, so you get why the comparison's there. And TAA at 4K produced the most legible outcome, but had lower performance. We also measured roughly a 21 to 23% performance uplift in built-in benchmarks for 
Final Fantasy XV. Tested with Turfworks disabled this time, putting gameplay and the benchmark as scaling roughly equally with DLSS to, uh, to each other. So gameplay did actually mirror the benchmark in this instance, which is good. NVIDIA's DLSS is the most promising aspect of RTX to date. Although it still has some problems, they are not terrible. They don't ruin the technology. Performance is improved, yes, but quality does take a hit in several instances. Flickering is the most egregious of the offenses, with the rest being sort of subjective and awash. That comes down to your own personal preferences, and we can't call those shots for you. We'd like to see flickering resolved as NVIDIA advances DLSS, because that's the most annoying out of all of the changes. As of now, we'd probably prefer to play Final Fantasy with TAA just to reduce that flicker, but the rest of the DLSS execution isn't all that bad and is a bit of a saving grace for RTX in its initial implementation. And that's all for this one. As always, subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up one of our shirts, our mod mats, or other products, and go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus. It helps out there as well. Thank you for watching. We'll see you all next time.